Risky Behavior. Yo, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Risky Behavior. Thank you for tuning in. Um, here we talk about behavior that is risky. And I like to talk about relationships and, you know, just people. Because I think people are the most important thing about living here on Earth. So I like to talk about anything surrounding people, relationships, whether they be platonic, marriage, long-term relationships, casual encounters. Those are some of the things I like to talk about and other various social topics. So I was watching tonight's conversation and I hope y'all familiar with it. If not, I will post a link in the description to this video and to them. They have lots of great content and they basically, it's a group of them. They sit on stage and they just answer questions. They have an audience and people, members from the audience will stand up, ask a question usually a relationship topic and they will answer that question and in this video the man you see on the screen stands up and he asks a question hey if someone you're with is not being intimate with you the title says they've only been intimate four times in two years so this brother is asking a question hey you haven't been intimate with me. When is it okay to step out on that relationship? So naturally I said, well, hey man, let me have a conversation about intimacy. So in today's video, we're going to be just dealing with intimacy. So I came up with a little something before the video starts. So I'm going to say um, intimacy. Emotional, physical, intellectual, and spiritual serves as the cornerstone of a deep and fulfilling relationship. It is through the sharing of personal thoughts, feelings, desires, and vulnerabilities that partners develop a profound understanding and connection with each other, fostering a sense of belonging, support, and mutual respect. This intimate bond is vital for the navigating the complexities of a relationship as it cultivates an environment of trust and safety where individuals feel valued and heard. Conversely, the absence of intimacy can lead to feelings of isolation, misunderstanding, and emotional distance, eroding the relationship's foundation. Without the nurturing presence of intimacy, partners may find themselves disconnected, unable to effectively communicate or emphasize with each other, ultimately jeopardizing the relationship's health and longevity, therefore actively cultivating intimacy. You hear that? Cultivating intimacy. There's a lot of things you can do with intimacy, but cultivating intimacy is essential for sustaining a strong vibrant and supportive partnership cool and with that said let's just go ahead hop into the video and see what they say i am so excited i don't know her name but this is one woman on stage and she always be dropping some wisdom man i'm gonna point out when she comes up on the screen but i'm excited to see what they're going to say about this because I haven't even seen this video. I just seen the title and I was like, oh, boom, whatever, you know, because I was on Clubhouse and we was talking about intimacy and some people try to downplay sex in a relationship. But what they fail to realize is not so much the sex. It's about intimacy, man. It is really, really an important part of a relationship. And without it, I don't see how. I mean, some relationships could probably survive it, but I don't think most would survive it. That's just my honest opinion. I just don't think it could because intimacy is just deeper than sex. Intimacy is just, it's not just sex. It's the, it's the flirting. It's the being vulnerable with each other. Intimacy is very, 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 very important to growing in your relationship with that person and continuing to get to know them because even when you've been with somebody for so long, you'll notice that like for anybody that's been in a long term relationship, right? Regardless if y'all got married or not, you can notice that after like every five to 10 years, they change a little bit like me. You know, I've changed a little bit. And without being intimate, how could your partner 
get to know you over and over and over and over again. You see what I'm saying? So, anyway, let's hop into this video. You know, y'all have a baby about a year and a half, maybe two years. You and your partner maybe have sex a handful of times. So, with that being said, when is it okay? <laughs> when when is it okay for the man to cheat? To, to step outside of the relationship and have relations with When you say feeling, handful of times, like you five, mean like, yeah, okay, like five, yeah. six times. You said that when is the right time? to step out of this relationship, you to get, no, no, hold on. Say that, to ask her. No, so you mean to tell me when is the right time to ask your woman that to step out of your own personal integrity and to sacrifice your own morality for another thing? Of that's what we're talking about? Yes, that's, that's exactly what we're talking yep. about. How did you just try to minimize it. like that? No, no, that's no, 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 sexual no, desire. No. Y'all are acting like is not important, though. No, I'm just not, saying, no, at no, least, no, okay, no, let it cook, let it No, we're not saying that not important, but you are not about to sit here and come and ask your woman because she does not have the ability to give you all of that, considering whatever circumstances, that you should be able to step out of side of your personal integrity and morality for some So, let me nah. nah. nah, I get it. I get it. You said let's switch the question. Okay. Let's really switch that. What if he only paid bills a handful of times in a month and a, in a year and a half? Would you expect her to stay? Y'all know Ace got them card it, games on sale over there. No, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That was interesting. He always got to throw a curveball in there. Oh, but the lady I was talking about, she usually, when she speaks, I feel like she always got a, she got a good head on her shoulders. Um, Her right there. Oh, let me not. <laughs> That's a crazy uh, pose way to stop it. Hold on. Let me find Okay, I ain't want her. Well, she still kind of looked angry in that one. Well, she was angry. She ain't like them trying to say what they were saying. But she, to me, she is right. You have to maintain your integrity, right? And the importance of maintaining your integrity is that even if that relationship is not going to work, you don't, you got to keep in mind is that when you go to your next relationship, right? They're going to ask you what happened in the other relationship. And I would hope that you wouldn't lie. I would hope that you would be honest, you know, because they might find out anyway. You don't want to be the person that stepped out on your relationship because y'all went through something. And you see what I'm saying? You don't want to be that guy. You really, really don't. That's not a good sign, you know, and. I think it's important what she said about maintaining your integrity and your principles is because if you don't have integrity and principles, how can you fix the problem? And that's why a lot of guys in that situation would step out and would cheat because they simply lack the tools to really find out what's going on. Because. He also said that. Because he put this in the story. So we have to stick to what he said. He said something about them having a baby. A lot of things change when you have a kid. And this is why they tell people all the time. A lot of times people get into these relationships and the relationship might not be doing too well. And people think, well, maybe if we have a kid or maybe if we have another kid, if they already got one, it'll fix everything. And that's just not true. It's not true. Kids pull parents apart in a way. They can bring you together if you and your partner have a solid re relationship, meaning y'all are taking them to do karate, ballet, violin lessons, piano lessons. So they can bring you together in that sense. They can bring a family together because everybody huddles around that child. And so, therefore, it can bring people together in that way. But remember, I just said they huddle around that child. The child becomes the center of attention. And that's what separates them. And sometimes when you're in a relationship like me, I'm married. Sometimes when you have kids, you do go through an awkward period where it seems like the intimacy is not there.
And you got to learn to talk to your partner, have that conversation. You got to learn to power through that because you're going to go through that. I've even heard some couples express that the other parent is jealous of the child. That happens all the time as well. And so I would not tell that brother to um, or the sister, because a woman could honestly be in that position too. find out why y'all not intimate first. And not and 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 when you go to talk to them, talk to them in the right way. Or if y'all need to go seek help, get some help from a professional if you need to. To facilitate that conversation. But you definitely want to find out. Why y'all are not intimate. Before you step out. Especially. I know just from being married. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes women. Have personal things going on. With them and their bodies. And. They just don't want to talk to a man about them. And not the man that they love. Sometimes they feel ashamed. Sometimes they feel embarrassed about whatever it is that's going on and they just don't want to talk to you about it and you don't want to make the mistake that somebody is going through something or it's a problem that you could have helped fix but you chose instead of fixing that problem you chose to say well I'm just going to go sleep with somebody else and so I can understand what she means is that so for some sex to to bus a to bus a bus you going to just abandon everything and i know and this is and i can tell by her reaction because she's married right and <laughs> i i don't want to sound i don't want to be offensive to anybody but you can tell sometimes in these conversations who's been in a relationship and who hasn't like really been in a relationship because like living with somebody, you know, in the house with them and you're really running a family unit, you'd be surprised how easily you can go a month without having sex with somebody. You'd be surprised. You, you would be surprised that because a month ago by and you hadn't even thought about it. But you got to understand, every day you had something to do. We're talking about waking up early and also depending on how many kids you got. You're talking about waking up early in the morning, getting everybody dressed, taking them to school. You go to work. When you go pick them up from school, by the time you sit through traffic, get them home, get dinner ready, prepare, do everybody's homework, get everybody's clothes together, you hardly have enough time. And this is why this world is so messed up, the economy, the cost of living going up. It doesn't even allow for parents to have enough time with their children. By the time you feed your kids for dinner, it's time for them to go to sleep and repeat the process the next day. Y'all are so tired Monday through Friday. Y'all didn't even have sex. You didn't. When did you have time to do it? Sometimes you so tired, you know, sometimes, you know, we get sometimes guys, you know, we will unwind. We'll be on the couch. You wake up. Two o'clock in the morning, you have fell asleep on the couch. You like, when did I sit down on the couch? So I know people go like, huh? How y'all ain't had sex? And it's easy. It's e- it's so easy. It is, and that's why a lot of times marriages and relationships have problems because people don't realize how easy it is to forget about your partner. People don't. Realize how easy it is to forget about yourself. Some of y'all got dreams, things y'all wanted to do. Go back to school and you don't even realize it's been three years since you said you had that dream and you ain't did it yet. 
Time will slip by fast on you. So I can understand this. I I would encourage this brother to just go get help, to be honest with you. Because I think some people in it being insecure, they think, oh, well, we ain't had sex. We ain't been having sex. They probably were having sex with somebody else. And that's so not the case. It, it's really not. Because think about it. If you haven't been having sex with your partner, why? how can you think about it this? Look, you, if you're a guy, right, and you haven't been having sex with your your wife, right? Have you been having sex with somebody else? No, y'all both haven't been having sex with each other. It makes no sense for you to accuse her of cheating. Right? Because that's the only reason I could think of a guy would say, I'm about to step out. You must think your woman is cheating on you because if you know that y'all both not having sex, you're not cheating. Why would you assume she's cheating? So therefore, you know, okay, it's a problem. Just go fix it. Find out what's going on. And if she is. Doing something or in a space that you don't approve. Like she said, like like the lady said, hey, keep your integrity, lead the relationship. And that way, you know, you did everything right. And there's nothing on your um, conscience and stuff. So. Hmm. But I'm not going to lie. Two years is a long time to only have had sex four to five times. That's a little bit extreme. It is. It is. I I, I think that um, hmm, maybe a good, it's not a good number, but I think a good number to be worried about would be 12, right? And that would be. To me, be nice because it'd be like, OK, um, we only have sex once a month. That sounds like something that's a time issue. That sounds like y'all might need to go ahead and take time off a little bit more. Maybe take one more one day off. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, at least. Try to take a one day off out the month extra to kind of pick up on that intimacy. But here's another thing that I, I think about too, right? Because just because you and your partner is not having sex doesn't mean y'all lack intimacy. So to me, these are the things I would worry about, right? So regardless if me and my wife have sex, right? I can't think of, I can't think of a day that we're not flirting, that we're not joking with each other, messing with each other. Right. So even the times like the weeks or whatever, where we were just tired. I can still say that we were happy. We were still flirting. We were still finishing each other's sentences. We just understood that, hey, I'm tired. You tired. And boom. And. My wife, and she's good for this. She'll go, hey, because we got our favorite hotel. She's like, hey, I called your mama. She going to watch the kids and we gone. You know what I mean? So even in times where you're not having sex, I, I would only really be worried if you think about it and you're like, wait a minute. Not only are we not having sex, but we're not even cuddling. We're not even, you know kissing each other you know like um you know guys we like to walk through the kitchen smack you on your butt bite you on your neck kiss you on your neck or something like that like it still need to be some flirting going on and stuff like that so from his question i can't really get a full picture of what's going on in their relationship and stuff but it sounds like it's a real issue and stuff like that he asked it as if he was asking for somebody else i think he asking for himself i don't know But yeah, but those are my thoughts and stuff. What do y'all think? Um, make sure you drop a comment. Um, like the video if you can. Share it so more people can see it and join the conversation. I appreciate all the love and su and support. 
Um, so that's it. I will catch y'all next time. How important is intimacy in your relationship? And what does it look like for you? Risky, out. Risky behavior.